verify that. What I'm going to do is just for fun, I'm going to unplug these and check that just to make sure that I really am running on 9 volts here. So let's see. Positive is there. Look at that. 9.37. So I would say it's still a good battery. I'd stick my tongue to it and do the test, but once I got to a certain age, that was no longer pleasant. I have passed that age. Alrighty. I guess it never was, but as a kid it was kind of fun. Um, yep, here's my test right here. That test to the chip. Now, just out of curiosity, coming off the programmer, I want to see if this changes, you know, how, how having that battery in there changes things. Well, as you can see, for some reason, while it's on, now I'm pumping a negative 3.96 volts in there, which shouldn't be the case because, you know, I've got that diode in place. So, but again, the electrical engineers might explain how, yeah, the diode protects the chip, but not the programmer. Maybe that's the case. <laughs> Maybe I should have a diode on both ends. I don't know. Somebody who watches this and knows better, please tell me. I'd love to hear that. All right. Hit the program one more time. 16, 17. See, it drops. It, it's a little bit lower than at the beginning and then pops up. So it's about the same. It drops just a little bit with that battery on there from 17.4 to 17.1 during the program section. One more time. Yep. That's it. So I would say this is successful. And how do I know it's successful? Well, when we go back over to the PC and we try this, we don't get those errors. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn this thing off, and I'm going to load, um, where are we here? The yellow one is the programmer. I want to check the chip voltage. So I'm going to go back to the gray. Gray is chip voltage. There we go. All right. And let's see here. Back over on the PC, I'm going to load the file I wanted to load here. So I'm going to load the uh, PII, PIA test, which is what I'm calling it. And what it does doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm able to burn it properly without errors, which is really, really helpful. So with, with the battery in the off position, let's try to uh, burn a program this. So we do program, and what happens? Get an error right here at address 20. Let me hit program again. I bet it goes all the way to 21. See, well, it goes all the way to 7FE, uh, uh, 7FA. Well, it wasn't, it's not going all the way through, so let's see if I can get it to go all the way through. Turn this on, and I'll bet it'll go all the way through. Hit the program. All the way through. Look at that. Program successful, no errors. Program successful, no errors. We do a uh, verify. Let's turn this off. Do a verify, and verify successful. Now, I did this before using the wrong chip setting, and it verified successful, but it was not correct. I thought the Intel 2716 might be similar or close enough to the, uh, uh, to the Fujitsu. It's not, so at least the setting is right. Once we get the voltage up, I'm, I'm, I'm finding that it's, it's working pretty well. Um, I sent these off to a friend to have them verify, and uh, when I burned one here and I consistently got good verify results, he ran it on his. I, just, I was just using that. It gives me seconds before it beeps at me. Uh, he, he ran mine against I, I, one of those ones I burned with this before this apparatus. He, um, um, you know, I checked it on here. It verified every time. But when he got it, he verified it, and he got a different result every single time, which tells me we programmed it right on the edge. And this was a big problem we were having. We were chasing, chasing our tails, trying to uh, figure out what was wrong with the, uh, with the application we were putting it in. And it turns out just wasn't doing a good job programming them. So there you go. All right. So let's try, uh, let's try doing this one more time without partially uh, burning this. I'm going to put this one in. And we're just going to go all the way right away from the start with, uh, with the with the nine volt boost. We'll call it on the nine volt boost. I kind of like that. Nine volt boost to your Mini Pro. What is it? Is it an LT or a TL? TL eight six six A or CS. I'm sure they're going to be the same in this regard. All righty. So let's see here. I still have the same still have the same file loaded. And so I'm going to do a device. It should not give me a blank check. Um, 
and address 0 is 5F, so I knew that wouldn't be the case. But turn this on, that's okay. We'll program it the rest of the way. should do so without all the multiple errors I used to get. So we'll flip that on, and we're going to hit the program, and go. Look at that. Program successfully, first time. I'm not even going to run it again. Let's do a quick verify. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test this. Verify. And there we go. Now, I will say this. this as, you look at this, as you look at this file over here on the PC, you can see that most of it, the file is blank except for the beginning and the end. If I load a very full file, I think we're going to have, uh, you know, a much, we're going to see much more extensive programming errors because as it tries to push the ones down to zeros for every bit, it's got to do that for more bits every time it encounters something that isn't a double F, a uh, double F byte. And I know I'm not using the correct nomenclature, but uh, I hopefully that translates well to what I'm trying to articulate here. So there it is. This is the modification to the Mini Pro. Uh, we're going to call it the 9-volt boost, the programmer 9-volt boost. There you go. It seems to work. It seems to work well. And if anyone has any suggestions or comments, I certainly welcome those. And uh, thanks so much for watching.